dear bishops and my dear fathers praise the lord we are making our retreat and the lord is speaking to us in various ways various persons and today the lord has chosen me a weak instrument to speak to you and the topic that is given to me is ccr current of grace you might wonder that during this retreat why this topic it's because the ccr has organized this retreat and then we have realized that the importance of the holy spirit in our lives in our mission and the anointing that we have received as priests how we have to remain in the anointing and the catholic charismatic renewal services helps us with its service to remain in this anointing and that's why this topic is being inserted into the retreat program and so today we shall see what this catholic charismatic renewal services are and pope francis calls it now charis of course the full form of charis is catholic charismatic renewal international services but is pope francis he addresses as current of grace and as he launched this charis the new uh, entity because initially there were two uh, branches that is the catholic charismatic renewal services and the covenant communities but he has put them together he has merged it together and made it as one single service and he calls it the current of grace and so we are really going to reflect upon the current of grace as he launched it he in his message said that the catholic charismatic renewal services yani the charis is meant for service he insistently said that service for evangelization so he stressed upon our right and duty to evangelize as charismatics as people who are filled with the holy spirit and led by the spirit to really evangelize the whole world and then he said to evangelize he highlighted three main uh, points the first one is baptism in the holy spirit and he asked us to propagate it to spread it that everyone should be baptized in the holy spirit so baptism in the holy spirit and the second one he said is unity pray and work for unity ecumenism he stressed on that and the third uh, means of evangelization that he said is serve the poor so these three things he just explained to us and through the current of grace we should be able to experience the baptism in the holy spirit we should be people who work for the unity of the whole mankind the church and then we should be people who are concerned about others the poor the needy the downtrodden the marginalized the migrants and the people who are deprived and rejected we need to be concerned about them we need to commit ourselves for them and that's how the pope in his message said to us so the holy spirit pope saint john paul the second tells us that on the day of pentecost the holy spirit was sent to sanctify the church forever so that believers might have access to the father through christ in the one spirit we read in a, a saint paul's letter to the ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 it is through christ that all of us jews and gentiles are able to come in the one spirit into the presence of the father this event 
constitutes the definitive manifestation of what had already been accomplished in the same upper room on Easter Sunday evening. The Lord appeared to them, to the disciples and Mary, and he told them, receive the Spirit. He breathed into them. The risen Christ came and brought to the apostles the Holy Spirit. He gave the Holy Spirit to them. Though the doors being shut, he told them, receive the Holy Spirit. Later on, on the day of Pentecost, the doors of the upper room are opened and the apostles emerged out bearing witness to Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. So the apostles felt a complete uh, fulfilling. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they experienced that in the Acts of the Apostles we read about the Pentecost. The Acts of the Apostles speaks about the Pentecost, the birth of the church at length and in many passages. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Apostles felt complete and capable of fulfilling the mission entrusted to them. The grace of the Holy Spirit that the apostles conferred on their collaborators by the imposition of hands continues to be transmitted in Episcopal ordination. In the sacrament of orders, the bishops in turn render sacred ministers sharers in this spiritual gift. Through the sacrament of confirmation, they ensure that all who are reborn of water and the spirit are strengthened. Thus, the grace of Pentecost is perpetuated in the church. The Second Vatican Council writes, the spirit dwells in the church and in the hearts of the faithful as in a temple. By the power of the gospel, he makes the church grow perpetually and renews her and leads her to perfect union with her spouse. The conciliar document Lumen Gentium tells us that the era of the church began with the coming of the Holy Spirit and continues down the centuries. The Second Vatican Council was, in a special way, ecclesiological and essentially pneumatological. So the church was born at Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, we read, When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from the sky, which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. We come to know that a child is born through the cry of a child. For example, the lady who is to be, who is expecting and who is going to deliver a child. And we, when the time comes, we take her to the nursing home and she is taken in the delivery room. And we are all outside. How do we know the child is born? But when we hear a cry of a child from the delivery room, immediately we say, ah, it's over, the child is born. So through the cry of a child, we come to know the child is born. How do we come to know that the church is born? 
what was the first cry of the infant church that was speaking in tongues the apostles and the disciples who had gathered here with mary in the upper room when they were filled with the spirit when the spirit was poured upon them by tongues of fire then they were filled with the spirit that's the time the church was born and what did they do first the first cry of the church was speaking in tongues they were all they broke out in tongues they started speaking in tongues as the spirit enabled them to speak so that is the first sign of the infant church acts 2 verse 4 there we read we come to know the church was born in the upper room through the speaking in tongues again the same chapter acts chapter 2 verse 13 we read people ridiculed that they were drunk even at that time people could not easily accept them speaking in tongues even today a lot of people criticize about it when the church was born it was charismatic by the outpouring of the holy spirit in the early church the apostolic times lots of miracles charisms healings etc was taking place by the power of the holy spirit if you see the early church they were all filled with the spirit and then there were lot of signs wonders taking place how peter and john walking to the temple and then they cure that lame man in the name of jesus rise and walk how peter raising the dead how the apostles performing so many miracles because they were all filled with the spirit and led by the spirit during the second century so it went on the church in the early church was filled with the lot of signs and wonders and the spirit was manifested the presence of jesus was felt and people called them the those who follow the way the way of jesus and it was a powerful movement that moved everybody but as time went uh, went ahead during the second century a priest called montanus who was the founder of the montanism he stressed the charismatic aspect of the church at the neglect and denial of the hierarchical church so he stressed so much the charismatic dimension of the church he rejected and neglected the hierarchical dimension as a result the hierarchy became cautious and began to suppress the charismatic dimension of the church together with that when emperor constantine assumed power in the 3rd century the church from a movement became an institution and then when the church was institutionalized adult baptism was replaced by child baptism so every child that was born automatically baptized so the initial vigor was slowly diminishing but still many persons institutions remained charismatic the spirit was always active in the church the pope exhorted the people to pray for a new pentecost even we can say pentecostalism that is now present is an effect of the prayer of the catholic church blessed elena gaura a fo- the foundress of the holy spirit sisters congregations wrote 12 letters to pope leo the 13th asking him to encourage the charismatic dimension saying that the pentecost is an ongoing process so we can see though the charismatic dimension was suppressed 
and uh, the church became not a movement but an institution so institutionalization took place but still there were people who were filled with the spirit and one of them was elena gaura the founders of the holy spirit congregation and she knowing the importance of the charismatic dimension of the church she writes to pope leo the 13th that you must introduce the pentecost novena and pope introduced it but the novena was not properly followed and so the pope pope leo the 13th goes ahead to issue an encyclical in 1897 divino illud munus that's the name of the encyclical through that encyclical the pope insisted everyone to pray the novena to the pentecost on january 1st after the effect of that prayer on january 1st 1901 the church officially sang the hymn veni creator spiritus and then we see the effect the first spark came out in a little girl named agnes of bethel college kansas in the united states she began to speak in tongues and she was a pentecostal again in 1907 the classical pentecostalism began in june in january 25th 1959 pope saint john the 23rd announces the convocation of the second vatican council calling on aggiornamento he officially gave a prayer and opened the vatican second in 1961 and the prayer that pope john saint john the 23rd said was lord renew in this days your wonders among us as by a new pentecost what a beautiful prayer that pope saint john the 23rd asked the whole church to pray lord renew in this day your wonders among us as by a new pentecost and the church prayed from 1961 to 1965 and the effect of this prayer is a renewal in the church by the spirit through the catholic charismatic renewal the catholic charismatic renewal began in 1967 two years after the conclusion of the second vatican council and 70 years after issuing of the encyclical letter on the holy spirit and instituting the pentecost novena by pope leo the 13th in 1967 a new spring time in the church was assured in by the powerful and transforming experience of a group of students of duquesne university run by the holy ghost fathers in pittsburgh diocese in the us and they the students and staff 29 students and staff came to ark and dow retreat center for their monthly recollection and that was from 17th february to 19th february 1967 on the 18th of february 1967 the second day that is a saturday after supper these 29 students and staff went to the chapel and started praying two among them prayed over all the participants of that recollection then they began to speak in tongues till 3 o'clock in the morning they did not know how the time passed then from there it began to spread all over the U- united states 
and this had spread everywhere every parish and all the places people started coming together and praying over each other praying to the for the infilling of the holy spirit and they started experiencing the gift of the holy spirit the charisms of the holy spirit and they started speaking in tongues operate charisms and way in this way the faith of the people who are becoming strengthened and increased and at that time when that phenomenon was going on in pittsburgh diocese in the united states cardinal joseph swenens the archbishop of malines brussels of belgium one of the he was one of the participants of the second vatican council and he was writing at that time in belgium or uh, a book on the holy spirit monica obrain a lady from the us who experienced this outpouring of the holy spirit as a consequence of the duquesne experience in that university she met joseph cardinal swenens in belgium and told him all that happened in duquesne university with the students and the staff and she begged him to go there and witness it and she asked him don't allow this to go like this you must go and witness and you are writing a book on the holy spirit so cardinal joseph swenens went to the us he went to duquesne duquesne university and then he experienced it he participated in their prayer meetings having experienced having recognized it as a current of grace and convinced of it he comes to rome meets pope paul the 6 and he tells him of the need of the church to accept and encourage the renewal in order that it should not grow in isolation and in the summer of 1975 some 10000 catholic charismatics gathered in the catacombs of saint callistus in rome a special mass was celebrated with singing in tongues and prophecies at the papal altar in st peter's basilica followed by the historical special audience with the pope paul the 6th saint paul the 6th at which the pope called the catholic charismatic renewal a chance for the world and then we find many people being touched by this and this started spreading pope paul the 6th also accepted it and he encouraged the movement then it started spreading different places we find today etwn channel etwn channel it is started by a cloistered nun mother angelica mother angelica she also it was a cloistered nun but father de grantis he used to come to their chapel to spend time in prayer after some time he started telling mother angelica mother i would like to pray over you usually we don't easily get into this we don't allow people to but she was saying what nonsense this priest is talking i am a cloistered nun we have our own uh, rules and regulations and we are praying we are spending time in prayer why he had to pray over me she was not allowing but the priest kept on and then whenever he came he used to say mother i would like to pray over you once because of his insistence several times mother said okay now you pray over at least you will stop talking to me like that so she allowed him to pray over and he prayed over for some time and then he concluded that and told her it's over then she asked okay only that it's over he said yes it's over you be in prayer now and she said oh this is the thing i didn't feel anything after some time she went in prayer then that night she was really having a very good experience and then she started praying prayer became part of herself 
and then she started speaking in tongues and she was really experiencing a beautiful experience a spiritual deep spiritual experience she experienced that the spirit has completely possessed her the spirit has empowered her the spirit has enveloped her and she is fully under the control of the spirit now that's the experience that she had looking at her other sisters also started asking mother we would like to pray over so the father was called and they all prayed over and then they were all filled with the spirit then mother angelica the spirit started using her and it started inspiring her then mother angelica started thinking i must start a broadcasting channel being a cloistered nun how could she do that so she was not knowing how will i do but the spirit once the spirit inspires that will show the way so they had a garage they didn't have a place in that garage garage she started in a small way with the help of some people uh, broadcasting a, a kind of a publication started there and from there it developed and developed and now today it is a big channel that is doing wonderful work of evangelization etwn channel that is how it happened mother angelica we have the renowned preacher the papal preacher father renero candalamasa he is one of the preacher for this retreat mom retent for the bishops and priests you know how he got into the spirit he only shared this and there are articles in which he has written about it in his own book he has written about it father renero candalamasa a capuchin priest a franciscan and he was very happy with his ministry but he wanted to learn english and so there was a group of italians going to usa for a charismatic convention and it will be it would be in english so he thought okay let me go and attend this at least i can hear and understand and in this way i can learn english so this is how he went for that convention and at the convention he went through and at one time there was they were divided into groups and then they had to pray over each other and they were all mostly lay people and father anairo kandalamasa in the midst of them in his group he was there seated and the people the lay people were praying over him he started thinking within himself what am i doing here i am a son of saint francis of assisi and these lay people they are praying over me what more these people have more than we who are the franciscans follower of saint francis of assisi and so he started thinking in within himself he didn't believe in it at all he wanted to escape from it but somehow they prayed over and that prayer worked and he began to experience something and then he allowed himself and then he was overpowered by the spirit and he began to experience and he began to break, break, break out in speaking in tongues and he experienced that the outpouring of the holy spirit upon him and he was changed and he becomes a charismatic then he began his preaching developed and he became a powerful preacher the spirit gave him that gift of preaching and today he is a paper paper household preacher and he is one of the preacher for this retreat how the spirit touches and transforms that's our prayer today for all of you who are attending this retreat that we are all consecrated people we are all anointed priests and bishops and so we should be touched by the holy spirit a baptized christian is a spirit filled and spirit led person and much more we who are anointed people we should have the anointing always with us today the charismatic catholic charismatic renewal services helps us to do this but many a times we today uh, brand this renewal as people who are clapping shouting hallelujah and all those type of these are all accidentals they are not essentials the essential of the catholic charismatic renewal is the goals of the catholic charismatic renewal is conversion five goals of the catholic charismatic renewal first is conversion an integral conversion of the persons that's what the renewal helps everyone to experience that interior conversion of the self and that is needed 
repent and believe in the gospel that's what jesus started his preaching without a conversion of the heart we cannot experience god we cannot be filled with the spirit so the first goal of the catholic charismatic renewal is conversion and the second goal of the catholic charismatic renewal is empowerment we should be people who are empowered not weak ones we are baptized people we have received the risen life of jesus we are the temple of the holy spirit god dwells in us what a great the privilege it is but we don't realize it so the catholic charismatic renewal helps us to experience that empowerment by the spirit we as a person the presence and the power of the holy spirit we should be able to experience every moment in our lives that's what is called empowerment so the catholic charismatic renewal helps every person to be empowered by the gifts and charisms of the holy spirit thirdly edification the third goal is edification through charisms we can build up the faith community so it is for the building up of the church the kingdom of god the faith community so that is the third goal of the catholic charismatic renewal and that is edification to build up through charisms to the gifts we will be able to build up the faith community the church and the kingdom of god fourth is sanctification the renewal helps us to remain holy to be sanctified to foster uh, to foster an ongoing growth in holiness that's what the catholic charismatic renewal helps each member of it and that's why it is necessary for us we will be sanctified we will be able to remain holy throughout our life every moment of our life so the renewal helps us to remain holy to grow in holiness and the fifth one is evangelization we will become missionary disciples this is what the catholic charismatic renewal helps us so the goals of the catholic charismatic renewal is conversion empowerment edification sanctification and evangelization this is the this is it so every baptized christian has to be part of it of course the clapping the shouting the alleluia the singing the dancing those who want it for whom it helps it's okay fine but that is not the essence of the catholic charismatic renewal we are mistaken sometimes sometimes even some of the charismatics uh, force people to do that no i don't think we need to do that that's a praise and worship we praise the lord with all our body soul mind and everything then we also worship him in silence it has to go together the silence is very important in the catholic charismatic renewal which many charismatics also don't understand then the contribution of the catholic charismatic renewal devotion to the word of god has increased among the uh, faithful among the priests among the religious among the bishops devotion to the word of god people started reading the word of god people started taking interest in the scriptures they started reading they started reflecting they started praying so the devotion to the word of god that is again the contribution of the catholic charismatic renewal then devotion to the holy eucharist the eucharist becomes a experience the renewal helps people to offer it with an experience so it is no more a, a ritual no more is just a function but it is an experience and so we come to know the eucharistic lord so devotion to the holy eucharist increases family prayer the renewal has brought the family prayer back into the families people who are touched by the renewal and they are able to sit together and pray lay a uh, personal prayer many people started personal prayer now spending some time throughout the day in personal prayer to have that personal experience then lay empowerment lay people are empowered today you can see how marvelously the spirit is using the lay people for preaching for many other ministries wonderful that is the work of the spirit today we can see that among the lay people you can see how the lay people are uh, touched and transformed how they are enthusiastic how the youth you look at the jesus youth 
how they are so much spirited so much on fire for the lord for the love of the lord so that's what we find that's the again the uh, contribution of the catholic charismatic renewal lay empowerment then love for the church love for the church has increased love for the priests and the hierarchy then material contribution people are ready to contribute and support the church these are all the uh, the contribution of the catholic charismatic renewal so my dear bishops and fathers this is what we must understand the right meaning of it and we should be able to get involved and make use of it in order to renew and transform the church into the mystical body of christ and that's why it is a current of grace it's really a current and it is forceful it will really transform everybody and that's what the it is purely catholic charismatic renewal is ecclesial that's why pope francis has made it into charis and he has made it into a public juridical personality of course the canon lawyers will understand the priests and you you all will understand what it means to be a public juridical personality charis is a public juridical personality so we can see down the lane pope leo the 13th decreed the catholic charismatic renewal pope saint john the 23rd prayed for the renewal pope paul saint paul the 6th welcomed the renewal pope john saint john paul the 2nd encouraged the catholic charismatic renewal pope benedict the 16th supported the renewal and our present pope pope francis promotes the renewal now through charis and this is what the catholic charismatic renewal which is a current of grace i am sure with this retreat you all will be touched and transformed you have the right perspective of what the catholic charismatic renewal is and you will be able to promote it in your own diocese in your own parishes and make the people really rejuvenated rekindled with the spirit to live and work for the gospel for the lord and his kingdom and so let us pray for this grace and i wish you all the best my prayers are with you god bless you thank you